Okay, I want to squeeze in one last question. We're running out of time, but um, this week we've had a revival of the lab leak theory um, of, for the origin of the coronavirus. Um, what's your thought about that and how should it inform future action? And maybe surveillance is part of that, but tell me where that belongs in our thinking. Yeah, well, look, there, there are multiple investigations that have been carried out by, you know, credible authorities who, again, have far more expertise than I do. Uh, and it's important that those take place. But really, my focus wants to be, regardless of you know, the origins, the main point that I want to make sure is conveyed today, it is when, not if. From whatever source, the world will face another pandemic threat like COVID-19. And so because we know that's going to happen, it makes complete sense. It is a very, very cheap insurance policy to be collectively putting together that $10 billion a year from you know, wealthy countries that would be that global insurance policy. And it is amazingly short-sighted, I feel, and we feel at the foundation, that the world is not putting in those resources given what we've just experienced and been through. And so you know, if there's one single message I want to take, certainly as a philanthropy, we will do what we can but this is, even as a very large philanthropy, this is not a gap we can fill. And frankly, it's not a gap we should fill. This is a core obligation of governments is to the health and well-being of their own citizens. And this is one of the cheapest, most effective public good investments that could be made. It's in the national interest. It's in the global interest. It's in everyone's interest. And, you know, I just, uh, we will keep raising our voice, um, but uh, hopefully we will hear governments and others respond because we need to make sure that a disaster like COVID-19 does not happen again at the scale it did.